Well, good day, everybody. As many of you may know, we had to uh, cancel church on Sunday as we had no power and therefore no internet to conduct Zoom or to conduct an actual worship service here in the sanctuary. So I am taping last Sunday's service for you today as the second Sunday of Advent that would have been held on December 6th. I first would like to just make a couple of announcements. Would you please keep in mind that the Kiwanis trees are here in our various local businesses. Please take an item, a tag item from the tree, fill it, and return it to where uh, you picked it up. These are due by Monday, December 14th, so that they can get these wrapped and sorted and placed in the homes where they are intended to go. If you need more information, you can contact Prudy or Jackie. Either one will help you. Uh, I also would like to invite you to attend a blue Christmas service with me on this Friday, December 11th at 5.30 p.m. Due to the rising number of cases in COVID, I will be doing this service via Zoom only, and I will contact all of my church members as to the link for that service, but if anybody else would like to uh, participate, please just uh, email gdk period P-A-S-T-O-R, gdk.pastor at gmail.com, and we will give you that information. I believe our prayer list, um, everybody should be uh, up to date uh, pretty much on the prayer list, so I don't need to go through that. Um, I just want to say please continue to pray for people. This is not always the delightful season for some, and this year I think has especially dampened some feelings. With that being said, let us uh, come to our worship service, and I will begin with our responsive call to worship. Let us hear what God will speak. Tender words for a burdened people. Comfort, comfort my people. The days of sorrow are ending. Let us hear what God will speak. Encouraging words for an anxious people. Prepare a way for the Holy One. Through deserts of despair, build a highway for our God. Let us hear what God will speak. Words of vision for a weary people. Steadfast love and faithfulness will meet. Righteousness and peace will kiss. Come, let us worship. Please bow in prayer with me and join me with the Lord's Prayer if you are so able to do. O Holy One, you are tender shepherd, architect of the way beguiling hope of all who go looking for you deep in their lives. Surprise us here with sweetness, challenge, vision, whatever we may need in this moment to recognize you and follow you into the future. We pray this in the name of Jesus, the Beloved, as he taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. At this time, I am going to go up and light the candles, the Advent candles. Holy One, we light this first candle, a candle of grief in the midst of the stories of the last year. Let it burn through these weeks 
as a beacon to be the light of hope. Let it guide us to your presence in our midst, leading us to your justice and joy in the service of peace. God be with us with the light. Holy One, we light this second candle, a candle offering comfort to weary spirits after a year of pain and loss. Let its glow remind us of your tender care and warm our lives in the light of peace. Let it guide us to your presence in our midst, leading us to your justice and joy in the service of love. God be with us in this light of peace. The first hymn that I will offer today is come the long expected Jesus. Many of you know the song, it's an ancient old song prepared way back in the 1700s. Join me if you know the words. Come the long expected Jesus born to set thy people free from our fears and sins release us let us find our rest in thee real strength and consolation hope of all the to collective liberation. Repentance and repair and reparation are before us. So God, let us have it. Speak peace through your people. We are listening. We who are ready are for you. So God, let us have it. Speak peace through your people. We are listening. We who are ready for your world on earth. Surely you will help us find the way together, and your world will know peace and abundance. There will be enough love. There will be faith. 
we can figure it out. We will balance between care for those who need it most and compassion for those who must let go of excess. The growing things will be in abundance, and none will go hungry. The rain itself, falling from the sky, will cleanse the world. God, your created earth, will breathe health again. My children's message today is based upon the scripture, Mark, verse, chapter 1, verses 1 through 8. And the title of this moment is, Hear Ye, Hear Ye. Before the days of printed newspapers, town criers walked all over the streets, ringing a bell and crying, Hear Ye, Hear Ye. And then they would shout out the news from every street corner, announcing town events, upcoming meetings, and other items of interest to the people. Even after printed newspapers came along, you could walk the streets of a city and hear the voice of a newspaper boy crying out, Extra! Extra! Read all about it! And then he would shout out the day's headlines, hoping to get the attention of those who were passing by, so that they would buy a newspaper. Well, today we get the news in many different ways. Some still rely on the newspaper, and they read it daily, cover to cover. Some of us get the news from the internet or our face, uh, our phones, cell phones. Others get the news by listening to the radio. I happen to listen to NPR every day in my car. And probably the main way that people get the news today is by watching television. No matter how you get the news, it's important to know what's going on in the world around us. Now, long before Jesus was born, God spoke through the prophet Isaiah. That's how he would get the message out. He would speak to his prophets. He spoke to the prophet Isaiah to tell how he would spread the news of the coming Messiah. And this is what God said through Isaiah. I will send a messenger to prepare the way. He will be a voice of one crying in the desert. Prepare the way for the coming of the Lord. Clear the road for him. Now John the Baptist was the messenger that God chose to bring this good news to his people. He was a very unusual man who wore clothes made of camel hair and he tied a leather belt around his waist. But was, what was most odd about him was that his favorite food was locusts and wild honey. You know that a locust is a bug, right? Kind of like a grasshopper kind of thing. Everyone has something unique or unusual about themselves. Perhaps you might think of something yourself about you. I'll tell you a secret. My favorite homemade sandwich in the summertime is fresh sliced tomato with mayonnaise and peanut butter. I know, it sounds kind of gross, but it's actually really, really good. John the Baptist traveled around in the desert preaching that people should repent of their sins and turn to God. Now we know that repent means to tell God when you know that you've done something wrong. And then if you've truly repented, you stop doing those wrong things. When people listening to John the Baptist confessed their sins, he then would baptize them in the Jordan River. Now John was a very popular man, and he had a great following, but he always told the people about Jesus. Someone is coming soon who is greater than I am, he said. He is so much greater that I am not even worthy to stoop down and untie the straps on his sandals. Yes, John was faithful in bringing the news to the people. It's been over 2,000 years since God sent his son, but God still needs messengers to spread the news. This year, as we celebrate our Savior's birth, 
Won't you decide to be God's messenger and share the good news with others? Hear ye, hear ye. Let us pray together. Dear God, we thank you for this very special time of year when we get to celebrate the birth of Jesus. There are many out there who don't know about Jesus. And so we ask you to help us to be your messengers and to share the good news with others. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. There's a cute little song, children's song, called Prepare the Way of the Lord. And I'm going to try to sing it to you. So prepare the way of the Lord. Oh, prepare the way of the Lord. Every valley shall be filled and the mountains made low. Oh, prepare the way of the Lord. Oh, prepare the way of the Lord. Oh, prepare the way of the Lord. Make the crooked way straight and the rough prices smooth. Oh, prepare the way of the Lord. That's part of our job. Prepare the way of the Lord. Jesus asks for us to not only prepare the way of the Lord, but to find ways to prepare the way of the Lord. In struggle and in joy, God is always faithful to us. And so we bring our offerings, our tithes, our treasures, our spiritual and natural gifts to demonstrate our faithfulness back to God. Let us pray, prayer of dedication. O faithful one, accept the gifts of our hearts and hands. May they be multiplied and magnified as the living presence of Christ in the world. Amen. Our next scripture reading this morning comes from the letter of 2 Peter, chapter 3. And I'm going to be reading verses 8 through 15. If you want to follow along, it's uh, not very far after the book of Hebrews and James in the New Testament. Above all, above all, you must understand that in the last days, scoffers will come scoffing and following their own evil desires. They will say, where is this coming, he promised. Ever since our ancestors died, everything goes on as it is since the beginning of creation. But they deliberately forgot that long ago by God's word, the heavens came into being and the earth was formed out of water and by water. By these waters also the world of that time was deluged and destroyed. By the same word, the present heavens and earth are reserved for fire, being kept for the day of judgment and destruction of the ungodly. But do not forget this one thing, dear friends. With the Lord a day is like a thousand years and a thousand years are like a day. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. Instead, he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief. The heavens will disappear with a roar, the elements will be destroyed by fire, and the earth and everything done in it will be laid bare. Since everything will be destroyed in this way, what kind of people ought you to be? You ought to live holy and godly lives, as you look forward to the day of God and speed its coming. That day will bring about the destruction of the heavens by fire, and the elements will melt in the heat. But in keeping with his promise, 
We are looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth where righteousness dwells. So then, dear friends, since you are looking forward to this, make every effort to be found spotless, blameless, and at peace with him. Bear in mind that our Lord's patience means salvation. The word of the Lord. My pastoral message today is called Hope in the Midst of Pressure. I listened to a man who voiced a common concern. Everyone is worried about the economy this year. My hairline is in recession. My waistline is in inflation. And altogether, I am in depression. The comment was made to make a little fun enlighten the conversation, but it reminds me that people face pressure, problems, and pain as a part of their everyday existence. Normally, people face the stress of life and just keep plowing through day after day. Occasionally, though, the pressure gets to them and they crack, crumble, and crash. They're left hurting and hopeless. For many, hopelessness has become their existence. It's at this point that one must strive to discover how the pressure of life can help us to find hope and peace instead of inner turmoil and despair. To be called from darkness into light is an evocative picture of life before and after Jesus. Walking in darkness is difficult. Even small obstacles become major blocks in the way. Have you ever tried to walk a woods path late at night without a flashlight? I have, and I swear that I found every tree, tree root, embedded rock, and dip in the terrain as I made my way along. A person walking in the darkness often stumbles and tumbles. In contrast, when one walks in the light, when one walks in an open field, the eyes adjust to what little light there may be, and the obstacles aren't quite as threatening, and the pathway becomes a bit easier. When the light shines even more brightly, say on a night when the sky is full of stars and, and the moon is full, the way becomes quite clear. In the letters that Paul wrote to the early churches, he often addressed the pressures and problems that they were experiencing. He wrote to infuse them with hope by helping them to see their strengths and to understand the purpose of pressure, of how they could discover ways in the midst of the pressure to find hope and peace. Beyond that, we might just see that pressure can motivate us to hold on to hope in ways we perhaps never considered. When the pressure of life is on, I'm more motivated than at any other time to want hope surging through my spirit. The good news is that because of Jesus, there is hope. The truth of the matter is that without him, we are lost and doomed. Now we are in the season that is the very origin of hope, Advent. Born in a time of great darkness, the Holy Child offered a tiny ray of light to ancient Palestine, a flicker of hope of that what the prophets had foretold had at last come true, a glimmer of light to help make the way forward a bit clearer and brighter. Now, hope is easier to find when you connect and make communication with the Father, Almighty God, a priority. In fact, 
Prayer was also a repeated theme of Paul's. He reminded people of their need to pray, and he made prayer a priority in his own life as well. Peace often comes to us as we pray and turn whatever is going on in life over to the care of God. The people of ancient Israel prayed often and with sincere intensity, leading up to the birth of the Messiah. At this moment in history, the pressure was on to not only bow to Caesar and the Roman government, but to be steadfast and true to the law and the temple system, which had also allowed evil to shadow its doors. The people were in a no-win situation. Spiritual warfare at their heels, the risk of physical and emotional torture always in front of them, economic exploitation through multiple tax systems, the path through the woods was very dark indeed. Paul offered the early church an answer to help them through dark times and to also help us today. Power under pressure produces hope. Paul reminded the people that their faith was growing, that their love for each other was increasing, that they were standing tough, and that they were facing it together. Their faith was growing, their love for each other increasing, that they were standing tough, and that they were facing it together. He was telling them that these things were happening amongst them, and not even in good times. It was happening while they were in the pressure cooker. Sometimes we make great discoveries about God when we weren't expecting to do so. When we're under pressure, we're able to see the ways that God provides and cares for us. And that in itself brings hope. God does some of his greatest work in the pressure cooker. Did you know that? Never forget, it takes broken soil to produce a crop. It takes broken clouds to give rain. It takes broken grain to give bread. It takes broken bread to give us strength. In the midst of turbulent times, we find a power that we never even knew we had. That power awakens within us awareness that we are not alone. That power brings with it hope. The last thing that Mary anticipated was to be called upon God to bear the Holy Child. How can this be, she says. And then God responds that with God all things are possible. And poor Joseph, on his knees praying, facing betrayal of his betrothed, Scandal in the village he calls home, and a child conceived by God, which he will be the caretaker. What? It's too much. Talk about power under pressure. The light of the angel, Gabriel, offered that open field view, and the pathway became a bit easier. Hope was on the horizon, and a sense of peace came to rest on the soul. Usually we don't think about the fact that God is in the process of doing something in our lives, even when life is tough and rough, especially when things are rough and tough. Anything that is important in life is worth the effort, and the important things usually take a lot of effort. It's important to refocus our attitudes when life is harsh and recognize that the Father is molding us into something more than we already are. It's often the process of pressure that produces hope. I think it's good for us to remember that while life is rugged at times, there is something else that is going on. God is in the process of making us different 
more tender, better, more usable. It doesn't mean that the pressure goes away, but it does mean that the pressure has a purpose. And hope lives when we begin to understand that. When the pressure is on, we can discover peace. It is that peace that reminds us that God is with us and that he is in charge. He is aware of all that is happening around us, and we must be aware that vengeance is his and his alone. We can relax a bit when we remember that the things that bother us become God's problem, not ours. And one day, God will balance the books. Once again, that doesn't do one thing to eliminate the crisis we may be in, but it does allow hope to bloom in the blizzard of gloves when the pressure is on. It's important to trust God for peace in the building pressure, and that gives us hope. We will survive, and we will cope with the pressure because we're not facing it alone. And that makes all the difference. Peace through pressure produces hope. This is good news for all who have a relationship to Jesus. I realize that hearing that there is hope to be discovered in the middle of pressure might not be exciting to some. Some of you might say, I don't want to find hope. I just want the pressure to end. That's what makes this point exciting. At some point, the pressure really does end. The great thing about being a believer, and one of the attractive things about Christianity, is that there is a promise of a day when the pressure ends. And on that day, the steam will be forever released from the pressure cooker. We will never be faced with pressure again. Because not only was Jesus born, but Jesus also died for us, and Jesus has risen. There is hope. That is the best news that we could ever get. We are guided by the light along a clear path. That hope allows us to face life every day knowing that God is in control. That hope allows us the freedom to become all that God has called us to be. That hope restores meaning and purpose and from the rubble of our shattered lives. We do not have to face problems, pain, or pressure alone. For the very one who created us and who loves us will be with us in every situation imaginable. And so here we are, reminded of the small flicker of light that now shines with power. We have seen a great light. Often in our lives, we find ourselves in situations where we do not know what to do. The circumstances of life have swirled out of control and the pressure is overwhelming. But the promise of God is in that moment. He does what needs to be done. He will not leave us alone. He will not forget that we need him. The Father and his beloved, our Savior, stands with us, and we never face darkness alone. That security, that love brings us hope and peace which is a very special and precious gift given to us because Jesus lives. And as Peter tells us in his second letter, therefore, beloved, while you are waiting for these things, strive to be found by him in peace without blemish, and look upon the Lord's patience as salvation. Let us pray. Almighty God, we give thanks to you for this season of Advent. 
so much to anticipate and expect as we once again visit the humble birth of your holy child. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Your great love for us is culminated in this great gift of hope, of peace. The joy that fills our hearts brings forth our own love for you. As we prepare our churches and homes in celebration and preparation, may our souls also be in a state of readiness to receive you, Emmanuel, in this Christmas season and in the coming day of the Lord. Father, this has been a hard year for many, riddled with crises and losses, COVID-19, natural disasters of fire and weather, exposure of social injustices rooted in racist and sexist structures, painful political reckonings, economic instability, leaving some to experience a loss of hope or a sense of peace. May you empower us, Lord, to be a beacon of hope and peace to those around us and with whom we may encounter. We remember those on our prayer list, and we ask that their needs be met, and that they too feel your loving presence with them. Guide us all closer to you. In Jesus' very name we pray. Amen. Our final hymn today uh, is one that I'm not exceptionally familiar with. I love the music, but I'm not going to try to sing it for you. I'm going to read the lyrics. Peace in our time, O Lord, to all the people's peace. Peace surely based upon your will and built in righteousness. Your power alone can break the fetters that enchain and sorely stricken soul of life, and make it live again. Too long mistrust and fear have held our souls in thrall, sweep through the earth, in breath of heaven, and sound a noble call. Come as you did of old, in love so great that men shall cast aside all other gods, and turn to you. Or shall we never learn the truth all time has taught? That without God as architect, our building comes to naught. O living Christ, who still does all our burdens share, come now and dwell within the heart of all people everywhere. Go forth into the world, energized to seek signs of God's future everywhere, especially in the unruly, the unkempt, and the persistent voices of prophets in our midst, calling us to prepare the way in our lives and in our world, for the Holy One is coming. Amen. Again, I invite you to join me for the Blue Christmas service this Friday evening at 5.30 p.m. And may you have a very blessed evening. God bless, and we'll see you next service.